Hello, and welcome back to a podcast about something. Today I'm here with Eric, and uh, we're going to be talking about football today. we got kind of a hodgepodge of football topics. going to go into a little bit of college, a little bit of pro, uh, NFL, as we call it here in the States, and uh, maybe some fantasy football on the tail end here. Eric, you ready for this? I'm ready for this. You know, uh, this will kind of be, yes, a hodgepodge, and if you caught our our other uh, cornucopia, podcast, if you would. cornucopia, if you will. Um, if, you ca- if you caught those at all, then you kind of know we're going to be a little lengthy and talk about a lot of different topics. And as we continue on, um, obviously our topics will <laughs> condense down a little bit. We just like, you know, maybe you get a feel for where we're coming from and some of our opinions. And uh, we have you know, some thoughts. We do have some thoughts that, like the other podcast, you're going to completely disagree with. So um, that's why we're here for you to. Ignore Amber any uh, sniffles or coughs on the air today. We, uh, it's going we both around, uh, got a little cold. It's the end of December, and that happens even down here in South Florida. So uh, oh, yeah, feel sorry for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all you people up it's north. It's 85 degrees outside right now. It so is. it's sunny. It's a rough day. Look at that. It's a rough day. Um, so let's just jump right in. We're gonna we're gonna talk about college football here first a little bit. Uh, I am a lifetime Florida Gators fan, so I don't have much to say on this topic right now. Uh, you mean the playoff? <laughs> yeah. How, and how Florida hasn't been in it yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That. Um, I'm, and, I can't really talk. You no, know, we much. gotta we gotta jump up from five wins somehow. <laughs> Hopefully next year we can do that. Eric, you're a you're a Miami fan, so I've been mean, suffering for a while. But not the one in Ohio. Better. Not the ones in Ohio. Not Miami of Ohio. Miami of Florida, people. Uh, yes, grew up an avid Miami Hurricanes fan. I actually do like a few different schools, but if I had to select the one, it's always been UM, um, the U, if you will. So uh, this year, especially for somebody like me, it's been very exciting. But as I'm sure we'll unpack as we look at some of the college bowl games and some of the things I'm going to say about my beloved Hurricanes, you're going to just think that I've been beaten down for way too long by mediocrity. And uh, I'm going to be a little skeptical about my team in their bowl game coming up. So we'll discuss that coming up in a few minutes. Yeah, let's uh, let's jump in and talk about the playoff, the CFP, as it were. Well, some people call it the CFP. Others call it the CFBP. I I just don't get it. Like, can we just settle on one acronym that <laughs> – Let's let's get well, this straight. People, they already have a committee to discuss who gets in. You want them let's, to discuss let's what to call form it? Form another committee, I yes, don't. just for the acronym naming <laughs> because it's been rough. You know, I I just want somebody to come across with. You with just want some acronym. consistency yeah. across the board in a, in a world where there really kind of is none as far as selecting yeah. who should win the national title. But let's, uh, maybe we'll get the BCS algorithm on it. That could, that could probably figure out. You know what? I miss the BCS a little bit. Yeah, so do I. That was when Florida was good and winning those championships. <laughs> Back when you, you know, didn't have to leave the state for a non-conference home game like Florida hasn't since 1991. Well, I mean, I don't have their schedule in front of me, but I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to jump in and talk a little bit about this playoff. And first, I think we'll lead Should off with the one and in the Clemson? four. Yeah, we're going to yeah. go with the one and four seed. Sugar um, Bowl. One of the best damn four seeds I think I've ever seen. So, I mean... That just tells you the depth and the and Are you and the from the school that Ohio State should have gotten in because no, they won the time? I agree. No. I, I think the only way to do that is... Uh, One word, Iowa. Well, you yeah. can't lose a game like that. Yeah. Um, well, and you got to look at last year with Penn State. It's the same thing. Two losses, win the championship. Not good enough to be in. I, I think it's deeper than the two losses. I think it goes deeper than the two losses. And I think, you know, we don't have any two-loss teams in the playoff right now. And I think there's a saving grace to that. But... Um, I, I don't like having two lost teams in the We're playoffs, touch unless it's later, absolutely but Maybe we should just jump um, into it now. Necessary. You're talking about expanding, you know, potentially to eight teams, and this, this would be your argument it. for that. I'm against, against it. it. Yes. Oh, okay. See, this would be my argument for it is, you know, if you're going to have these, these Power Five conferences, as they call them, then winning those championships should mean something. Um, so, you know, if, if you had all five champions get in, and then, um, and then you have the rest, the other three spots be at large spots. That would be my, uh, my vote of going to eight would be the conference, cha- the power five conference champions have to mean something at that point. So they get in no matter what, even if they have six losses, which, which I hate. Tough, I'm but. sorry. I, it's not the NFL. You don't have that many games. There's a ton of teams out there. Not everybody gets to play everybody. And I think, you know, having a team lose three or four games kind of, bastardizes the championship a little bit. I, I, don't, I don't know. I think it kind of just, it, it 
it soils it a little bit for me, if you will. And I think having the undefeated or a one loss team, be even a two, I can get on board with a two. Shouldn't be inclusive rather no. than exclusive. You lose, you're not included anymore. Two, two loss teams, um, gotta be real good for me to get their respect. And if you really want to compromise with me about expanding, I can go six like an NFL playoff bracket, but that's it. I can't have eight teams because the only problem, I have, back, the only I, guarantee problem I have with six over eight is then you're you're still going – you're getting close to having to include all five conference champions, and then you only have one at large spot. So I don't know. If you – I would say compress into four conferences then at that point. Four main – you got your four uh, automatic bid conferences and then two at large. That just goes to, that just goes to show you how many different – Factors you have to think about. And I, and I think to just have a conference champion just because, oh, conferences have to matter. I don't even believe that anymore. No one's loyal to their own conference anymore. I mean, that's no. nobody cares about. It. And they, they and schedule I- them, they schedule their way around so that, hey, we can beat our conference and then we'll schedule some foo-foos in the, uh, in the non-conference schedule. Like a lot a of people got this, this to. conference loyalty from fans. Like it, it was big, uh, in the late aughts. With the, uh, the SEC in, you know, when Florida would lose and then I would have other Florida fans that would go, oh, but Alabama's gonna win, SEC. I, I, no, I, don't I hate that. Alabama. I hate Auburn. I'm I don't not, wanna see them win. I'm not rooting for Virginia Tech. I'm no. not rooting for Louisville. I'm not rooting, I'm sure as hell not rooting for Florida State. We got UJ and Alabama this year. I don't wanna see either of them win. Exactly. Like, I, I don't exactly. like those teams. They're I, recruiting I spend my directly whole season. against you. Yeah. What are you chanting SEC for? No one, but you really, Georgia fan is really having a good old time watching Florida win, right. the, win the national title? I doubt it. I doubt it. You can chant SEC all the live long day, but I don't think that that's a I, thing. But expanding to eight to me would be a little bit of a, it would tarnish it, in my opinion. I think the national championship is something that needs to be, uh, special. I think that that's not something that Hey, we stumbled three times this year, but we still got a shot because of this conference championship bylaw or whatever the case it may be. I think having four makes it feel special. Um, eight teams just too much. I think it needs to be special. It needs to feel special. And there needs to be this kind of controversy. If the, I the college radio football, fill its days, if, well, if eight know, teams if are in, teams. then you're talking about, oh, your next gripe is, is, 16 and all that kind of stuff. I think scheduling matters. I think strength of schedule should matter when it comes down to, to who's getting selected. And if there's 18, the then only, there's no ramifications for scheduling poorly. Yeah, and the only place 18 comes in is maybe somebody like UCF gets a chance. And, and we're going to see what that chance would look like when they play Auburn here in a couple days anyways. So we'll we'll see if they deserve a chance or not. Um, you're right. You're right. Um, I, it's not. I'm not holding my nose up at UCF. I just... They didn't beat anybody of real merit, a real note. I, I don't. I, they had a tremendous team, and that coach is getting paid in Nebraska now. It's, but it's, it's it's the same argument that Boise yeah. State had, you know, back in the day when they went undefeated and didn't technically get a chance to play for the national championship because you know they don't play anybody because they don't play anybody. And the one and the maybe the two, three, four years in advance they do decide to schedule somebody like an Oregon or, uh, you know, somebody mildly. It's not going to pay off by the time they play that game. You don't know where those teams are going to stand or if they're actually going to help you in the polls if you decide to be undefeated. Let's talk, uh, let's go back here, uh, circle back to Alabama Clemson where, where we started. Right. Uh, in the Sugar Bowl, I got Clemson in this one. You know, I, I think Bama's been on a slow, almost glacial decline. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very slow and I think, between last year and this year, we're actually starting to see the wares of it. And, you know, Nick Saban is losing a little bit of touch. And, you know, with this this early recruiting period now, early signing period, he's missing out on a lot of these recruits because he can't go out and recruit because he's always preparing for, you know, playoff games. And uh, it's it's it'll just be interesting. I, I think we're going to start seeing them lose some games here in the future, um, like more than one a year. And it, the the rest of the SEC is coming along and catching up to to where Saban has been in the past few years. So I, I think it'll be interesting uh, for the next couple well, of years to see what happens there. I don't disagree with you about the result of this game, but I do think that you know we're still talking about an eleven and one team here. We're still talking about an eleven and one team that that lost a you know that lost a game to a very hot Auburn team, and Georgia happened to. Avenge their loss from earlier in the year. And, you know, it's 
a little weird triangle that they're playing at LSU. If Ed Orgeron can get everything back on track, I don't think they're pushing any threats. Um, Jeremy Pruitt at Tennessee doesn't really inspire too, uh, too much. Um, you know, I, I like Florida's hire. I think, um, I'm losing his name for Dan a second. Mullen. Dan Mullen. Sorry. He's going to Um, I am, I, I love what he was able to accomplish at Mississippi State. I think a lot of people forget because they, you know, a lot of Gator fans, Dak Prescott, they wanted the sexy hire. They wanted the, they wanted the Scott Frost. Or I'll, I'll to admit, I did not him. want Scott Frost because, you know, he did great at UCF, but as we talked about a little and we'll talk about more, does that mean as much as it should? Mm-hmm. Um, it shouldn't I, be hard at UCF. Right. I, because you have all the best athletes in Florida. You have all the, the cast offs from Florida well, and Florida State, Miami to, to pick up. I talked about from. this and we talked about, you know, with a couple of friends and we talked about Lane Kiffin, but I'll, I'll wait for this particular topic. Um, when we get to the UCF discussion with their bowl game. Yeah. Um, but I wanted Chip Kelly as a Florida fan. Um, cause you're one of the I, few that I've talked to. I, I think the offense needs invigorating. I, uh, I think Dan Mullen can do that. And Dan Mullen is familiar enough from when he was the offensive coordinator at Florida with the landscape of recruiting in Florida. Um, so I think he'll be able to keep the defense rolling. I didn't want Charlie Strong. I don't think one good year at UCF makes up for, or USF rather mm-hmm. makes up for, you know, what happened at Texas and just, they don't need a defensive coach right now. No. Uh, cause they, 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 they they've still got all their great defensive recruits. They're going to continue to get defensive recruits. Uh, they need somebody who can craft an offense that's going to score a touchdown every once in a while. And that's, uh, I, you know, I can't really slight Jim McElwain too much, but I think that, uh, you know, according to a few people that I've spoken to, he's he's got a little bit of arrogance with how he works with his quarterbacks. Um, yeah, I don't know why, because you know, so it looked like early in the year they were It looked like they were successful. Be, yeah. And nobody nobody on their roster scared me offensively. I could, you know, as a Miami mm-hmm. fan, and I'm not saying this to, to crap on Florida or anything, like, but – I'll tell you when you, when you, I know your team is good. It doesn't mean that I, I, I look like forward them, to that. But, um, but hey, those, those Tebow led teams, I'll even go ahead and say Percy Harvin probably. And, and the murderer, ever. Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> you know, he, he helped out, out those teams he a lot. He helped those teams a lot. Anyway, um, but I don't think the SEC, I don't think, I think that the top tier, which is Auburn, Alabama, Georgia, not in that, not in that order, obviously, but, there's them, and I think that group is getting ever so well, Texas close. Texas A&M might be interesting um, coming up here too now. Show me. Oh, yeah. Show me. I, I know what he was able to accomplish at Florida State, but now this is a whole new, different ballgame. Mm-hmm. Talk about a team that hasn't won big in a long time. Talk about a school that hasn't won big in a long time. Got all the facilities in the world. Johnny Football. But um, I'm, I'm talking on a national title. Night night. Night. <laughs> I'll be watching the Hamilton Tiger Cats this, this upcoming <laughs> summer. Um uh, show me, Jimbo, that you can do it in both places, and I'll, I'll give you credit where credit's due. But so um, back to Alabama, Clemson. We both got Clemson on that. We both right? got Clemson and, on that. Uh, and I, we've we've I got a little a bit different thoughts too. on what's going to happen to Alabama, but I, I think we're both sold on Clemson. Clemson's for real. What happened in Syracuse was not, and uh, they're, they're, I, I think they'll handle this pretty well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's go to Georgia and Oklahoma in the Rose Bowl out in Southern California. Mm-hmm. I got Georgia in this one. Um, I want Oklahoma to win because, again, I hate Georgia. <laughs> but, you know, we've, we've seen what happens when Big 12 teams come up against SEC teams and the, the defense just rolls, usually. Um, you know, they, they've had a few big, Oklahoma's had some big wins. They got their Heisman, uh, Heisman winner quarterback. And, uh, but I, I just think UGA will do it. That, they're going to keep the ball on the ground. Score points. How could you not? And How could you not? Between defense. Sony and, yeah. and Chubb and and, uh, and the like, you know, they're, they're so deep at that running well, back. Well, it's, it's every year they, they get a new running, running back that replaces yeah. the last one. It's like <laughs> Alabama. I mean, it, you, they just keep rolling them in. So I, I think we're going to see UGA versus Clemson in the in the championship. Um, I use my I use precedent to help me make this decision, and I'm, this is well along the lines of your line of thinking is. Uh, you know, will Baker Mayfield and Oklahoma struggle? They're obviously very prolific offensively. Will they struggle against a team that actually recruits defensive players? <laughs> right. So, I mean, I mean, Georgia has a defense that is not to be trifled with. I don't think it's close I'm to not anything. I don't think it's close to anything that Oklahoma's seen at all this year. 
And I think that, that you're going to see the difference. And does Oklahoma actually think, after giving up as many points as they have this year, that they can stop this running game? I, I yeah. don't. So no, I think I mean, you're looking squarely at a Clemson. And that, that's what happens when these Big 12 teams play, you know, outside of their conference usually. I mean, it didn't happen when they played Ohio State this year, obviously. But the, the defense gets put on notice. I mean, they, they can't stop anyone from scoring. So it, it turns into a shootout, and I, I don't think this one's going to turn into a shootout because Jordan's think, defense is too good. I just think May, Baker Mayfield's going to have a, a hard time speaking dealing with what's Speaking of uh, that Baker guy, he won the Heisman. Well, the Heisman. Did you know that? To, to Did you hear that announcement? Because I barely know it. Yeah, the uh, Heisman used to be something I watched. I made, you know, must see TV. I used yeah. to like watching those. Um, I couldn't care less. I, I mean, I barely knew. I knew Mayfield and Lamar Jackson were in the running. I didn't even know who the third guy was. You, you told me who he was. Oh, it was Bryce going, Love yep, from, Stanford. from Stanford. From uh, Stanford, oh. terrific young man, apparently. Um, Wants to be a doctor. Oh, good for him. Oh my goodness. Um, Stanford grade school wants to be a doctor. Yeah, good. So solid. So I wrote. Solid safety school, yeah. if you will. <laughs> um, but yeah, Baker Mayfield, I like Baker Mayfield. I, I like all his antics. Uh, most of his antics stay on the field, which I like. Uh, Except for um, the rest. Well, you know, <laughs> everybody gets arrested. Everybody gets arrested. <laughs> Who hasn't um, been arrested among us? But you know, he could turn out, he, he can go one of two ways and it's just gonna be who he surrounds himself with. If he gets drafted by the Browns, he's probably gonna end up like Manziel. If he gets drafted by any other team, you know, he could be Deshaun Watson-esque. He could be Drew Brees-esque. You know, you don't know. Now you're talking about him being the number one pick and I don't even see that happening, but, uh, I don't think he's Johnny. The Manziel. Browns have more than one pick. Don't, <laughs> they don't have to take him number one. They'll just go ahead and take Rosen and Darnold, both of the top. <laughs> yeah, they've got enough picks. So and take then all with the first pick in the second round, they're going to go ahead and grab make Baker yeah. Mayfield. like, all right, we didn't grab anybody until Deshaun Kaiser last year. We're going to take everyone. We're going to take every quarterback. And we're going to make sure we get this right somehow. So um, I don't think it's the players that are making the situation wrong. I think it's the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't think he's Johnny Manziel, and I think he'll be more successful. I, with he's, Manziel, it wasn't a, a talent issue. No, he's it was got a dedication issues. issue. Yes. It was a he doesn't maturity. Wanna, he issue. doesn't want to be at the practices and do. All, he doesn't want to put in yeah. the work to. But when you look at Baker Mayfield and you know his story, he wanted to play Division One, and so what did he do? He walked on at Texas Tech, ended up earning a scholarship, ended up starting for them. He gets hurt. He loses his job. He transfers to Oklahoma. He walks on at Oklahoma. Earns a scholarship. Earns a starting job. Heisman Trophy. I mean, he works for whatever it is he wants. He might not like his personality, but it doesn't take anything. I don't. I just don't know if I think everybody needs talent, a little crotch grab every once in a while. Hey, when you, you know? used to shake hands at the midfield, I mean, let's be. Come on, you're Kansas. Let's be classy about it. Be classy about losing, okay, Kansas. Um, I also. Man, I hope we keep seeing that same Deshaun Watson now you bring him up. Yeah. But I don't know if he's going to be that. I don't know if Baker Mayfield is, is going to be that. And, and another thing is, I, you I, want I'm him to be Deshaun Watson? Could be. Win this playoff, you'll have my respect. Right. Because if you can go through Clemson and you go through Georgia, you know. So we were talking about that. We, we both got Georgia and Clemson in the final. Mm -hmm. who, who would you get, just real quick, who you got in that one? Georgia and Clemson. I'm going to take Georgia. I got Clemson in that one, so Ooh, that'll good. be interesting. Sub bet. Yeah. Sub sandwich. Sub sandwich. All right. So yeah, um, let's talk about some other bowl games coming up. We're hoping to post this, uh, before New Year's Day. So there's a couple more bowl games that we're interested in. Uh, let's talk Wisconsin Miami here first, cause that's a little close to home for you. Yeah. I got Miami in this one. Um, Wisconsin is a very boring team to watch and, uh, I, I used to live in Wisconsin and you get used to just Three yards in a cloud of dust, and it it doesn't change. Even when Russell Wilson was there, it, it wasn't much more than that. He added a little electricity to it. Um, it was but, a hail mary that got you slapped, didn't it? That was Michigan State. Yeah, yeah. Michigan State, Michigan Wisconsin got yeah. you slapped. Yeah, Michigan State won that game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware. Um, so, and and that's kind of what Wisconsin does is it's good enough to get 12 wins and two losses, and then they play in a bowl game, and they're they're. Uh, their style of play does not transfer to playing teams outside of their conference. Uh, Miami has a lot of juice uh, going into the next couple years, so I, I think Miami is exciting. 
uh, you have different thoughts, and I just think you are too close. And no, I don't like it. I have I have the propensity to be negative um, about my canes, and I admit that, and it's something that I've been trying to get over, I guess, this year. And you know, obviously, I'm really excited about the Mark Richt era. I firmly believe oh, that. I don't like Mark Richt. Huh. I hate Mark Rick, but I'm sure that'll go away in a couple of years once the UGA stink wears off of him. I'll, I'll, I'll come around to him. <laughs> so I, I was excited when he got hired. I knew things were going to change. I knew things were going to change for the better. And it's like I told all my friends, if you had told me that we'd be sitting here in the Orange Bowl with two losses, we played for the ACC title game and lost. We had a 10 win season. We were obviously in the playoff discussion. Three years ago, I would have never considered this to be a reality. And if you told me when Rick was hired, I would have been like, if you just said, year two, this is going to be your season, would you take it? I'd shake your hand and say, damn right, I'll take it. So. He shook my hand. I did. Um, you couldn't see it, but I shook his hand. Audio video. Um, however, I do know that there's weaknesses. Um, it's just me being beaten down by years of mediocrity. I mean, ever since basically 06, Miami's just been on a decline and then leveling off well, at six, seven, eight wins. Well, they played this game a few years wins. ago. I remember when um, I was living in Milwaukee, I was at Wisconsin, that game. and Miami played. I was at that, that game. Was, uh, it was like Corey 38 Harris degrees. Years. Yeah. Don't talk. Don't say that name to me. Don't ever say that name. On what, how did that game turn out? I, don't, I was at a bar, and I didn't end up watching um, the whole game. It's called Wisconsin has a pass rush, and um, Miami's speed might have been slowed a little bit. To Corey Harris. Um, strike two. Um <laughs> Uh, Miami's speed was kind of negated if you watch that game. I remember that because it was cold and I was there and I was freezing in, in Orlando of all places. However, I was in Milwaukee, that turf, it was a colder. That turf actually shredded a couple of guys' knees. Um, they actually turf did go to field turf because of that particular game in that incident, if I'm not mistaken. But there was some issues with that, the field surface, but it still didn't take away the fact that you had Awful quarterback play, awful play calling. They were calling seven step play action drops against, uh, against a Wisconsin front that was just markedly better than Miami's offensive line at the time. And it was just sack after sack after sack and nothing get nothing going on. Sure Wisconsin's guy, have, I don't know if you've heard him, JJ Watt. Did he? Was he there I, for that? I Maybe he was so. I think he was a little young at that point in time. Mm. Talking, I want to say, oh, Jose, can you, can you get on that, like that up for us? Jose, Jose. that up for us. Um, but however, in regards to this game, and I don't want to take too long on it, but in regards to this game, I, I'm just, I like Malik Rozier. I like how he is very, uh, even keel. You can't really see emotion on his game. Yeah, Jose's telling me JJ Watt, 09, 2010 was at Wisconsin, so that would have been that year, because those were the years I was living So he in probably Milwaukee. did um, take a piece of Ja'Cory Harris' body yeah. with him yeah. back to Wisconsin. Thank you, Jose, um, for that. So I just think that this game might not be close at the end. I, I think that Wisconsin might have a difficult time moving the ball at first, but I think Miami's going to have an even harder time. Yeah, we'll and see. And I, I just I don't know if Wisconsin will be able to score a lot of points but they definitely will score enough to win. I, I think Miami will struggle for opportunities to score because they're limited at quarterback. And a lot of their best talent at receiver, their pass catchers, are not available for this game. So um, I'm going to take Wisconsin probably by 10. Whoa. Like 24-14. That's big there. Maybe, you know, 21-10, something like that. So I just I, – Miami's off, especially after that ACC title game, doesn't inspire me too much. Well, let's and talk about something game inspirational was here for a minute. Very frustrating for me as well. Go ahead. We got the UCF Auburn Peach Bowl. Mm-hmm. That's inspiring. What? What inspiring. do you think? Inspiring. Inspiring. UCF game doesn't really. No, I'm kidding. Um, what? My thoughts is that Auburn blows their doors off. Interesting. And inspiring. I, okay, so <clears throat> Gus Malzahn was a candidate for the Arkansas job after they fired Bielema. And if you don't know about Gus Malzahn, he was a high school coach. In Arkansas, a very good one, obviously. He's doing what he's Home doing. Home Bill in Clinton. Home Bill Clinton. Um, so he's from Arkansas, and that was actually where his uh, first college coaching job was. A major college, anyway. I don't know about his previous past. But he was brought on because there was a very studly quarterback 
Uh, his name escapes me, but he was the number one recruit in the country. And Houston Ryan Nutt, Mal. not him, Houston Nutt brought Malzahn, who was his high school coach, with him up to that level and basically made him a quarterback's coach and eventually became a play caller. Malzahn would move on to Tulsa for a little while, um, and then he would work his way into getting the Arkansas job. Uh, or, I'm sorry, the Auburn job. Um, which, at the time, a little bit of a surprise, especially since they fired Gene Chizik two years removed from a title. Yeah, that was, um, I was surprised by that Chizik firing. I mean, that was... Yeah, there had to be something going on behind the scenes. Yeah. I think Mount maybe the Cam Newton around, investigation could have, could have had something to do with that. Former under, Gator Cam Newton. Former Gator, stole a laptop, but that's yeah, in the past hasn't? now. <laughs> We've all done it, guys. Um, no, I just, I think that UCF, you know, especially after that SEC title game, and now that you bring up recruiting woes for Nick Saban and, and Alabama, like, this is a year where Auburn can level the playing field in yeah. regards to oh, yeah. a... Um, and the blank field is already really level. Auburn, Auburn beat Alabama, FYI. Mm-hmm. So they're going to want to close out this year and make sure that their signing class rounds itself out as best as it can. And I don't think a UCF loss is going to do well, do well for them. So I think they're playing with more on the line. And Frost, he's already got half his body out the door. Not yeah. just one foot. He's I, he's gone. I agree that Auburn will probably win this game. Uh, just, I mean, you get that SEC speed. They beat Alabama. They're a better team. Um uh, I think it'll be interesting to watch to see if UCF shows up at all for Frost. Um, it it seems like his team really cares for him yeah. and wants to play for him and doesn't mind him being split between the two because usually in a situation like that where the the coach is leaving, the the players and the other coaching staff can't wait to kind of push him out the door because mm-hmm. he's leaving them. Why why do they need him? But it looks like they're all kind of in it together. So I think it'll be interesting to see if they actually show up for the game. And it'll be interesting to see if they're actually for real. And if, you know, they, if it were an 18 playoff, should they have even been considered for it? Um, but on the, on the other hand, if Auburn comes in and blows the doors off, then that, that goes right to your point of, do we really need to expand to eight teams if this is what happens when the eighth team plays the, the fifth team? You know? Uh, well, that's USC, Ohio State later on in the Cotton Bowl. But, yeah. Um, when we were talking briefly about Frost's job at UCF, and, you know, we were talking about the job that he's done. And is it e- should it be easier? Should it be as easy as Frost made it look at a place like UCF or USF? Both double-digit win programs right now. Um, and then, you know, even Lane Kiffin down at, down at FAU is a double-digit win program. And, you know, a lot of people are saying to me when we have these college football conversations, like, oh, well, you know, UF, FSU, UM, they can only take. 25 guys in a class. There's going to be some casts off and go anywhere. Well, a lot of people forget. It's like, you know, you're looking at Lane Kiffin. You're looking at Scott Frost or Charlie Strong, who basically begged for the Florida job and didn't get it. Um, you got to go into a living room now, and you got to talk to these kids who have offers from Alabama, maybe. I don't know if they're cast off from... Yeah, one of the big I mean, three in Florida. Yeah, if you're at but I'm talking about you like other offers too. From you got other states. offers from a place like Missouri, SEC school, Kentucky, um, Iowa, Wisconsin is notorious for recruiting, recruiting Florida, Florida kids, um, Syracuse, Boston College. And, you know, I could go on for for all these days where they're 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 major schools in power conferences. They're just not elite football programs. Well, this is taken into the account. Do I want to go to FAU? Do we want to go to Boston College? But here's what you're you missing know? about those kids that maybe three or four stars in high school from the state of Florida that, that don't go to UF, UM, or FSU. Mm-hmm. They might not want to leave home. You're right. So that, that's where those, where FAU and USF and UCF can pick up is a lot of these kids, South Florida is all they know. Mm-hmm. They want, they want to stay there. They want to stay as close to, their little bubble in Miami as they can, or if they're from Central Florida, they want to stay. There are those there. types. But um, I think when you can t- tell so a that's, kid. That's who those guys I think are looking for is the right. cast offs that still want to stay in Florida. But it also takes the stability at the job. Like you and can we say, call them cast offs, but these guys are. say Lane Kiffin's going to. Ten oh, times he, better athletes than either of us. He signed a 10 year contract extension and, uh, yeah, you really think he's going to be there in three years? I mean, I, if I'm, if I'm a parent, and I, as much as I, I do like Lane Kiffin, actually, I, I love how he trolls people. I think he's a tremendous play caller, and he's he's learning the ropes about being a true head coach. And he was one of the original trolls. He was at it when he was at Tennessee. He was oh, trolling way before. It was so internet. much fun yeah. watching him. Um, well, 
as as an outside observer, maybe yeah. as somebody in the conference that's well, like I had know, to listen to them all the time, it wasn't off. fun. Um, but as much as I do, if I'm a father and I got Lane Kiffin and a couple of his staff members in my in my living room trying to convince my son who who didn't get, who got passed up, but he's got offers on the table from out of state schools, and you're trying to convince this kid to stay. All right, coach, we love you. We love what you're doing at the program. These and coaches really are going to move on. Before, Before somebody at, at like a Wisconsin or you know a bigger school exactly. is going to. That's my point. That's why I don't think these schools will be able to stay as as stable as they're, they want. They're only going to get the people that that want to stay close to home. They're not yep. they're, anybody who wants any stability that and doesn't mind traveling out of state will mm-hmm. pick up on that. So, um, and anything can change the drop of a hat in college football, but I, you know when you have a hot shot coaches at these mid-majors, it's really hard to A, keep them for those mid-majors, and B, maintain that stability even after they're gone. Yeah, and so, I college just, football, there's just so much that goes. There's so many teams. It's so hard to follow nowadays. Like, it, it so much gets lost in the shuffle that, mm-hmm. you know, there's – let's talk about something that's a little more close to home, a little easier to keep track of. Let's talk about this uh, thing they call the National Football League. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the NFL season is rounding out as we speak. Uh, we're going into week 17 here. Playoff picture is getting kind of clear, unless you're in the AFC. That is a little messy. Mess. Big topic in the NFL is uh, these ratings and what's actually affecting them. And we've talked about this before off the record, and we just wanted to kind of put it down on paper here. I don't think it's as big a deal as... Uh, what some outlets are making it out to be. I understand ESPN's need to make this about themselves and why it's hurting them, but I, I think it has very little to do with the protests or even with the president uh, and what he's telling his followers to do and what people who are against him are trying to, to prove by being against him. I think the situation is a little deeper than that. I, I don't think, you know, everybody's sitting in their house on Sunday watching the game that's on CBS because, honestly... Where we live, you got a Dolphins game, a Jaguars game, or a Buccaneers game. Much to our chagrin. Do you want to watch any of those teams every week? No. I, 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 I rarely watch network games. Um, I have a Sunday ticket, and so I'm either watching on my phone or on my iPad, and not even I don't even know how they calculate those kind of right. Games. And and so neither do that. So and many different. Yeah, there's so many different ways to watch the so, games now. People go to bars. So using go, using Nielsen ratings to to judge how a a football game played out on uh, or who watched it is ridiculous. You know, a lot of people, if they don't have Sunday ticket themselves, they know somebody who has Sunday ticket, so they're going over there to watch the game they want to watch. There's just so many ways so this counts as one, to watch one any other game as other than Fox and um, CBS. In an effort to not be political whatsoever, I, you know, I, I don't have a side of the fence. I get both sides of the argument, especially when it comes to the kneeling and, and the social protesting and everything that's been going on. I don't have a side in this. I, I wish there was another avenue to go about it, and I wish both sides had other avenues in order to express their thoughts and feelings on the subject, but uh, I refuse. I, I, I don't I think love Dave in Alabama is, is affecting. No. Not watching I, the game is, is affecting anything. I'm too big of a football fan, and if, if you know me, then you know that I'm telling you the truth. I'm too big of a football fan to allow people I've never met to affect my Saturdays and Sundays. Correct. Um, and the way I feel about watching. I, I enjoy watching football. I'm sorry. So I'm you're not going to. You, just because some guy in Philadelphia knelt for the national anthem in his game against the Browns does not mean that I'm not going to have fun. I'm just going to turn it off when I see Tom Brady on Sunday night football. Right. I'm sorry. I, I love watching these guys play. I'm a Bears fan. I love Air, watching Aaron Rodgers play. Freaking magician. So, I. I just appreciate great talent. I appreciate great football. I have a big football background. And, you know, my members of my family feel very differently about that, but they also feel very differently about the game than I do. So I, I'm i yeah. not and, one of the ones that the NFL needs to worry about. Right. And, and you know, a lot of people out there, they, they think it's an NFL problem. How is the NFL going to fix dropping ratings and people not tuning in or kids not playing as much? And mm-hmm. I don't... I don't necessarily well, think kids aren't playing as much. Yeah, yeah. So that that can be an issue, but it's it's not an issue today, and they definitely need to address it because mm-hmm. kids not playing today is going to affect them in twenty years. But kids not playing today is not affecting who watches on Sundays. I don't think. Mm-hmm. 
because the, these people have already made their choices. They're, the research on concussions is out there now. It's, it's not complete, but it's out there to be seen. And you know, rules, and if really- NFL players know what they're signing up for. In the 80s and 90s, might not have necessarily known what they're signing up for. Yeah. And and those are the guys with the problems. Is is they didn't know what they were signing up for. That's you take Chris Borland who walked away after two years because he knew what he was signing up for and decided that's not what I, I that's this. not what I want. Yeah, right. I don't I don't need it anymore. And he decided. But every need. every other person in the league knows the same information he right. knows and is making a conscious decision to to take that risk. I think that every kid, every um, and if, if we're talking about the health of the game itself and. Um, I do believe that rules changes on every level have been prudent, and I think that they you are going in the right direction. You would know more on that than I do because you, you're closer to it as being a high school football coach. I used to be. Used to oh, you used so, to be. Yeah. An accent. <laughs> but I, I see coach. that going on. I don't see the need to ever put on a helmet or shoulder pads before you get to the high school level. No. Um, I, I think that allowing young kids from the ages of seven, eight, nine years old to start clanging heads um, that's that's a bad recipe. I think it can't be good. It might not affect too many people, but it can't be good for business. Well, that'll be interesting. And, uh, these researchers at Boston College have found a way to start testing for CT with people who are still alive. Yes. So that'll be interesting to see what comes of that. Um, I'm very curious about that. I, I would sign up for a study if one was offered what? to me. I played football for four years, you know, or more than that, six years, eight but years, something like is, that. There is a sharp decline in, in some of the participation levels across the country. Uh, but it's like that with, with every, you can talk about safety. It's still, like you say, you know what you're getting into when you're going to try to bring another man to the ground. Not everything is going to work the way you want it to work. There are always constant variables. Sometimes a guy puts his head in the wrong spot. Sometimes a guy gets hit in the wrong place. I mean, God, I feel horrible for what happened to Ryan Shazier, but well, I don't think that but that, that can is happen norm. anywhere. You look at uh, the kid from norm. Louisville um, in basketball, Kenny Ware, snapped his leg in half. Oh, sure. He's a freshman, yeah. In an Olympic game. Right. So, I mean, so, it's, it can Olympic happen. Primer. But, but that stuff can happen at the college level, at the NBA level, at the NFL. It can happen when we're out playing in our backyards. Like, it's not going to. Beamed in the head. Yeah. As pitchers or batters, they both get beamed in the head. Mm-hmm. Run, you know, outfielders run into each other. You know, a few times a year, make Sports Center or something like that. So it's these games, and nobody talks about hockey. Goodness gracious! And in hockey, I got to give them one thing. In hockey, you actually misses if you if you do something maliciously. Oh yeah. That they consider you miss as much time as it takes for the person you hit to come back. Yeah. You know, and so I, I like that when there's a real danger of losing your paycheck. Hockey guys are tough guys. When there's a real danger of losing millions of dollars because you wanted to take this guy's head off. I mean, it's not just some one or two game suspension that you can appeal down to cut in half. Right. You sit there and say, "All right, you have to miss you, you Mister Safety. Uh, you have to miss as much time as the receiver you just laid out. So if he's not back in eight weeks, neither are you." And I think that'll change a lot of things going forward, especially if you take their game checks with them. Oh yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, I, I don't think that the NFL is going anywhere. I think no. people want to see the juggernaut fall because it makes for a sexy conversation right. topic. And well, and I think it. there's just so many different ways that people are watching now that the, the rating system that we're judging it by it's okay. and it's saying okay. it's disappearing is, yeah, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't make sense anymore because mm-hmm. nobody watches that. Nobody watches anything that way. Mm-hmm. Speaking a little bit about, you know, player safety, one of the biggest things was uh, with player safety a few years ago, they, they moved the kickoff back because the kickoff – or they moved the kickoff up rather – because that's the most dangerous play in football, they say. The kickoff returns, everybody's just running full speed and smashing into each other. It's not fun. No. It, or it is, <laughs> depending. <laughs> depending on who. If you're the kicker, it's a lot of fun because you just kick and then you don't do anything. Or if you're a nutty kicker, you could just run down and <laughs> spear somebody. And um, so, you know, uh, they moved it up to try and make it safer. And I, I think they're going the wrong way with that. We've been trying to figure out for years of how to make kickers matter and how to – the extra point doesn't make sense when it was from the three yard line, so they moved it back to what is it, the twenty now? Mm-hmm. And um, so they they've just been trying to to make it a little more interesting, make not give you that guaranteed point after every touchdown, right? Fifteen, I didn't know, like a thirty three yard extra point. Yeah, it's something like yeah. that. So um, um, and and it looks like that's been working. You know, we're, they're missing more kicks, and it looks like a lot of these kickers actually get the yips, like they miss one that. 
it's they're so focused on making that extra point that they just can't make anything anymore. Um, I can't it's hard to save my life, but kicking a twenty yard extra point is one of the easiest things that anybody with an athletic bone in their body can right. accomplish. Kicking a thirty three yard extra point against an actual rush in let's say New England in January that'll get into your head, and so. You here are wanting to kill the extra point. So, yeah, I I had this idea a few years back. I I say just get rid of the extra point altogether. No no point after, no two-point conversions. Well, we can talk about it. But basically, instead of kicking the extra point, on your kickoff play, if you kick it through the uprights, that's one point for your team. So you still have, technically you have your extra point. It's just coming in a different way. The kickers are still important because you need a strong leg kicker to try and get it through the uprights. Um, and you you cut out a lot of the kick returns because you're going to be kicking it to the back of the end zone almost every play, uh, trying to trying to get it through the uprights. So you cut out a dangerous play, you cut out a boring play in the extra point, and, and you've got something there that, that kind of makes sense to me. Now, there would have to be some discussion of what to do if you need a two-point conversion, but I don't think the need for two-point conversions will be as necessary – because they're going to miss a lot of they're going to you're going to miss more than you make on those. I agree with you in the sense that I always thought that if you do have a kicker talented enough to nail one through the uprights on a kickoff, there it should, should be worse on it. Yeah, and not only that, but having that opportunity to score more points in a game will give them more value under the salary cap too. Well, and I think that you could actually be changing the structure of the way you pay kickers, but I think that you're hurting them if you take away the ability to make the extra point. Just because if so you, you want it to be an extra extra. Point. I don't know why you'd, you'd kill that, which isn't necessarily a dangerous. There's play not for a problem people. with it, right? Um, the extra point or the two point conversion. There's, I think, there always needs to be a point after attempt. So that's so. And so you're saying the kickoff then becomes a free throw, basically? Is you you've got it there? It's, a, a it's another it, extra it's, point. But we just talked about me being a Miami fan and. The greatest punt returner, kick returner of all time, it went to Miami them, and played right. for my Bears. And it, I, I gotta tell you, when you got a guy like that, like a Tyreek Hill or a Devin Hester, something like that, when, when they're standing there on that goal line and the kicker you have isn't necessarily the strongest kicker, it's not a given touchback, that puts some, and there is some excitement to that. I get that it's dangerous, but you still know what you're signing up for. I get it, but the rules have, Brought down the opportunities to get hurt substantially. Well, you still got that guy returning punts too, though. I, I get that, but it's not the same. It's not, it's not the same. It's not a kickoff so, return. And there's is also, very exciting. What, you, what you're missing here might be there's a lot of strategy involved with where you're going on these kicks. Do you pooch it? Are you holding a team short? Right. Well, what do we do about onside? For the end zone every time. What do we do about onside kicks? Well, onside kicks still. Yeah, you don't so, have to kick it through the uprights yeah, every time. I just think that. If, There's if a you lot need, of strategy involved. If you with came down to the end of the game and you position. needed the ball back, you wouldn't try and kick it through the uprights. You'd, you'd go mm-hmm. for the onside. I get that. But, um, I just don't think there's much more that the league can do to reduce the amount of injuries on kickoff. No, and, and again, this was a better idea a few years ago before mm-hmm. they made the changes that they've made. Right. But, I see what you're but it was always one of my ideas, and I, I, I still think it could work. <laughs> Come on, Goodell, if you're listening, just think about it. I'm sure you're points on the points on the kickoff. Yeah, I like points that. on the kickoff. That'd be fun. Give so. give my boy Eddie Pinheiro something to do next year. Yeah, right. He can bomb it from like eighty. Have you seen Have you seen his YouTube? Videos? I have not. I have oh not. my goodness. So, speaking of rules, rules. Uh, one that's very controversial over the past few years has been what is a catch, Calvin? Well, here's here's where I come in on this. A catch is a catch. The only reason this is a discussion is because everybody's making it a discussion. It's It's been propped up by every announcer after a controversial catch call is made going, I don't know what a catch is anymore, John. And and it's it's become a different problem. If, if Chris Collins were just sat there and went, yep, the ref called it a catch, it's a catch, and moved on, mm-hmm. there wouldn't be this big controversy. But every time there's a call, it's, I don't know what a catch is. I don't, I've been doing this for 20 years. I don't know what a catch is. So when these experts have a problem determining what a catch is and voice that they have a problem, mm-hmm. it makes the layman, us watching at home, seem like there's a problem. 
Whereas if they're just like, yeah, that's a catch, that one's not a catch, and and just basically took the ref's side, whatever they decided, you wouldn't you wouldn't get this big outrage every time there's a, a controversial call. My or question would be, it's it's like the block charge call in basketball. Whenever the call's made, the announcers just move on. It's subjective, right? Okay, the ref called that a block. All right, let's move on. All right, the ref called that a charge. No, nobody's arguing about that for three days after it happened. You know. Um. Yeah, you're right. I also think that those are non-scoring plays, unless there's free throws that come with it. But right, you're also talking about um, you know, a game where scoring opportunities are very, right. very increased. So I, you know, the the relevance of something like that might not equal up. I think what I would want to know. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking. I catch a ball on the five yard line, run it into the end zone, trip and fall over my own shoelaces. Well, that's and, catch. Well, hang on, trip and fall under my own shoelaces, fall down and drop and hit the ground with the ball, and it flies out. I, I lose the ball on my trip. Is that a catch and a touchdown? Because in the in the letter of the law, I'm it watching would be Calvin Johnson the and catch, a lot of people brought this up. But you completed up. the catch at like the two yard line when before you got into the goal. Have you You're ever seen, have you ever seen Calvin Johnson's yes, 2010? Yes. The 2010 one. Our, our good friend JP complains about this call often. I was even, I'm a Bears fan. And I, I, well, I, agree that. I remember where I was when that happened because I don't understand. He gets up and he just sets the ball down and lets it. Right. And that's the same that's thing with the Dez Bryant. The catch, but they last year or the year before. Um, agreed. I thought maybe the Cowboys got a raw deal on that one, especially. Uh, Romo. I, I like Romo, especially in the booth. Now. Yeah, he's, um, no, you know what, Romo? That's neither here nor there. I you stay just, in the booth. You're better served there awesome. than you ever were as a quarterback. Um, but the whole Steelers thing, I mean, if he's running it in from the 10 and then he trips and falls on the goal line and drops it, that's a whole other thing. I think that in the letter of the law, that's the right call. And I, you know, it's just that, that whole Steelers Patriots game, Them's the breaks. Yeah. And I, I think that when you leave it outside of those hands, I mean, come on, just hang on to the ball. Right. Just hang on to the ball. Well, a especially with that plain one, and simple there, there's no reason. And you follow through with that catch. With that Steelers catch a couple of weeks ago, that there was, no, there was no reason for him to try. He should have held on to that ball. Mm-hmm. That one, yeah. Uh, but like Calvin Johnson held on to the He used the ball to pick himself up, like to stand up. Yes, he, was, he was still holding it the whole time. That right. was... So I, I just think, hey, uh, to me, a catch is a catch, not letting it hit the ground. The whistle is blown. It's still in your hands or tucked in your arm. And then you hand it back to the referee because that's what a catch is now. Like, you know, if you got to go use the restroom, you better make sure you're holding it and it's not touching the ground. Well, you can't bring it in the restroom. They'll think you deflated it. And that's a whole <laughs> different ordeal. We don't want to get into that. Don't, don't <laughs> talk to me about all these Patriots conspiracy theories. Tom Brady's just better than you, and Bill Belichick's just better than you. Stop trying to find personally. Personally, uh, I don't know. That's pretty good QB in my day. <laughs> I want to flag football MVP. I don't know if you know that. I don't. I, I did not. <laughs> Speaking of MVPs, a uh, lot of lot of surprises this year coming out of the NFL. You I'm know, Brady, Brady, Brady's and Pat- Brady and the Patriots are up there as usual. Steelers are up there as usual on the NFC, though. We've got some interesting things going well, that's on. That's a good playoff race, isn't it? In- Eagles and Vikings right at the top. Somehow, somehow, uh, you know, I'm a- I'm all aboard the Wentz wagon. The Wentz wagon. I, I like my Wentz. respect this year. I was a little, I, I wasn't out on him. I wasn't against him. Not I a just great receiving core, but, but making them look really good. They went out and got him some weapons. Alshon Jeffrey's a great weapon. Um, South Carolina grad. Yeah, so, I mean, he's, I don't know, did he graduate? Okay, he South there. Carolina player. attendee. <laughs> Student at one point. Um, Vikings, anyway, same thing with the Vikings. Vikings. Come out of nowhere, that good deep. Well, you know, I mean, they got all the Bradford. pieces. You lose Bridgewater, then you go sign Bradford. You give up a first-round pick for that. Then you lose him, and you're left with Case Keenum, and all of a sudden Keenum has become... I mean, we were laughing at this because you said he saved your fantasy football season. Yeah, he year. saved one of my fantasy football yeah. seasons. That was a rough Who's one. Who's ever said that in their life? Um, so, I'm, but, I'm but they had the pieces that. there last year. If you remember, they were the longest team. They were the longest undefeated team last year, and then they started losing guys left and right on their mm-hmm. defense because their defense is really what makes them tick. Uh, the Vikings are. Yes. 
Um, and very, this year, this year their defense was a lot healthier, and uh, that got and they use their Keenan, weapons in such a they correct do. way. When Adam talking about is Thielen, Diggs, Rudolph. The two running backs, McKinnon and Murray, I mean, great job going out and getting a guy like Latavius Murray to take the pressure off of guys right. like Jarek McKinnon and Matt Well, because Dalvin Cook. Dal- yes, and <laughs> I'm talking about losing Dalvin yeah. Cook, but that's, what I'm, that's my point. They've been through so much, mm-hmm. and here they are right here in the thick of things, and oh, they're, they're going to be a very interesting team to see. Come playoff, come crunch time, you're going to be able to get it done. What if you have to travel? What if you right. go on the road? Um well, so being in the number seen, two slot, not me, but the only right. time they'd have to go on the road is to the Eagles, and the Eagles are a bit banged up right that now. Right, so I don't know if they might have. They might get. Yeah. They might get two home games. Yeah, so we'll here. see. So, um, the New Orleans Saints, Todd, they're Payne, good this year. The, the Drew Todd. Brees air air raid show is seems to be on its way out as they like handing the ball off to their two very <laughs> studly running backs. They like throwing it to them too. They like throwing it to them too. <laughs> However, they they're so I was, will consider they're just as beastly either way. So, so. I was, uh, I think it was, it was on one of the NFL pregame shows or, or, you know, something. There's all these NFL shows out there. Uh, Ryan Clark was uh, formerly of the Steelers, now plays or uh, works for ESPN. He was talking about Alvin Kamara, and he was talking to Alvin. Huh? Alvin. That's what I said. Alvin Kamara. Okay. Like it's, just, it's your name with a K. I thought you said Alan. <laughs> Alan or Alvin. Pretty sure I said Alvin. Jose, look into that for us. Um, but so he's saying Kamara has this running style where when you hit him, just half of his body goes dead basically. And so the defender will let up thinking this is a tackle. Hmm. And then all of a sudden he surges again. The other half of his body takes over it. So like they hit him on the right side. His right leg kind of just like gives out. And then he keeps going. And if you watch, watch the next Saints game. Watch him, w- watch noticed. him break a tackle. You can kind of see he goes a little bit lopsided and then acts like he's giving. Right. And, and then the, the defender lets up a little and he's just gone. Huh. And I thought that was very interesting. And, and that's a interesting way to break <laughs> tackles. And that's why he's so good at breaking tackles. He's and just uh, so versatile too coming out yeah. of the backfield. And you know, Ingram in the same, in the same light. I, it's it's hard when you can say a former Heisman Trophy winner, what was he, a first rounder? Yeah. I mean, I mean he's not the best back in his own backfield and he's still kind of in the prime of the didn't know career. how to they didn't they didn't know how to use him. I think it took Kamara getting there and seeing how to use Kamara to go, hey, this guy can do the same thing. So we don't he's have a little to bit he's a little pace. bit smaller, but yeah. he can do the same thing. Because they used to have Darren Sproles and all these other guys that they would put in just to catch the ball. And in, can Ingram can Kamara even it. start at Tennessee. I mean, it just tells you I don't why Bruce really Jones remember is no him longer from, employed. I don't really remember him from Tennessee that But much. you should. When right. you watch this, <laughs> exactly. you should. You should have been like, oh, there's a first round top 15 right. pick. <laughs> if, if Zeke Elliott can do it, right. you know, and, I mean, this guy, I consider their games not to be like similar, but they're just as versatile as one of them. He's, he's so, closer to Le'Veon Bell than. Yeah, yeah. I'm not making Zeke, a physical but, yeah. comparison, but, um, they're just as valuable to their team's offensive success. Rams and Chargers both uh, both doing good in LA after the stink of Jeff Fisher has worn off in for the Rams. The controversy I mean, behind the the leaving from San Diego. Um, they're still playing in a twenty five thousand seat stadium. Yeah, the Chargers. Well, and so. and from what I've heard, I don't watch many of the Chargers games, but it basically uh, being in that stadium makes every game feel like a road game because there's so many transplants in LA. Yeah, that. All, all of the um, the visiting team usually has more fans than the home team, and in such a small stadium, that can build up on you quickly. Dolphins fans feel that hurt because for a long time, unless you have the thing about the city of Miami, and it's the same thing with LA. Um, the thing about the city of Miami is that you, you better have a good product, or nobody's coming. People, people were will still, come, but they're not going to be coming for you. People team. were still just getting to heat games with right. the big three, <laughs> like. Eight and also minutes leaving, left in the first quarter. And leaving early. And leaving really early because they wanted to be to South Beach by a certain time. Um, Miami Hurricanes games, laughably thin in attendance. Dolphins games, laughably. But also, they haven't been championship caliber squads for a long time. Terrible for quite some time. Um, the Panthers. Boy Cutler. I went to a Blackhawks Panthers game, and it was 75% Blackhawks fans in Sunrise. I couldn't believe what, what I was seeing, but it also didn't surprise me. Um, Los Angeles. You better have a good product. I guarantee you come playoff time when the Rams host a playoff game, the Coliseum is going to be packed. Well, that'll be interesting to see, see what those... But 
Hey, Those they weren't filling it out last playing, year. Yeah. For a playoff. They finally got their team back and they weren't filling it out last year because well, can you blame like them? you said. Did you Jeff see Fisher, the, did you see the team Jeff Fisher put I'm out? I'm not there? I'm not gonna bag on Fisher too much, but he's he definitely needed a change of scenery and so did the Rams. Yeah, I mean and, there's you gotta think there's something wrong when three of the quarterbacks he coached to terrible seasons are going to be in the playoffs this year. And also Sam Bradford. That's an interesting point. I mean so um, that's that's an interesting point to make. And you speaking, know, just, of, speaking of disappointing and Jeff Fisher, <laughs> these are some teams who had disappointing seasons. Right. The Raiders. I was really looking forward to them. Heartbreak. I really I, I like Derek Carr team last year. I really like Derek Carr. You wonder if he still might be injured from when he went down early in the season. With his had, back? Yeah, had a yeah. back injury. Well, they said that he would be playing with a substantial amount. Yeah, you got you got Amari Cooper and Michael Crabtree, who should be much better, and just for some reason neither of them can catch a ball. I had a rough year. Amari did. Yeah, um, they, never they really been catch. a Crabtree they, fan they drop. when he produces. So. They, they just have too many drops. Marshawn Lynch was serviceable. I mean, he came in. He played. I had him on one of my fantasy teams. He would score ten to fifteen points a game mm-hmm. in fantasy football. I mean, that's that's good. It's not what you kind of expected for him from him coming back. A lot of, but at the same time, it's kind of what you expected because he took a year off. A lot of noise surrounding yeah. him, and oh, I, I oh, thought maybe maybe that noise had its positives and negatives. And but I mean, obviously, Carr getting hurt and missing a little bit of time, and then you know, you just didn't have the. You didn't have the chemistry, it seems like you had from a year ago. That, no, uh, that togetherness, that passion that they seemed with, to carry up until with Marshawn Lynch, later it kind of seemed like he just wanted to play there because it's where he's from. He didn't care that anybody else was on the team. Like, That's the truth, and, That's and you see truth. it in the the fight in the game they had with the Chiefs, and there was suspended. that fight with Marcus Peters. He went out there to defend Marcus Peters, his cousin, but he went out there to defend Marcus Peters instead of yeah. His own teammates. Right. And um, so it, it felt like he just wanted to play there, and it didn't matter who the rest of his teammates were. He just wanted to play again. He wanted to play in Oakland. So he was there. He showed up. He got his 50 yards and touchdown every game, and that was it. Think he retires? I, no, I, th- I think he'll probably put in another year maybe. With Oakland? Yeah. Dep- yeah. It depends who comes. I, I don't think Del Rio is going to make it. Um, so it depends who comes into coaching. You think he's getting fired, huh? Yeah. I think he's got... I think he's very good. I want to say he's got three years left on his contract. I don't necessarily know uh, if they want to eat that eat that kind of money. It is NFL money, and it is very... It's like Monopoly money, but... Another coach that should probably lose his job, Jason Garrett with the Cowboys. I mean, how many That's kind years of run his course. He, how many I, years can he be nine and seven and first round out of the playoffs and it just be what it is? I mean, Zeke Elliott comes back last week, does nothing. I mean... It, Barely, barely made a difference in the game, and yeah. Do you expect a lot from Zeke Elliott at that point? I mean, he took six weeks off, and I know that you should I, you should be able to come in and plug and play, especially but, as a running back. But there's still, you know, there's still you're operating. You you got to know that things evolve on an offense as as time wears on and different here's, personnel here's changes. The, but here's the other thing: so they played the, the Seahawks chemistry might not be there. absolutely floundering. Um, they've got no offensive line. Their defense mm-hmm. is. Destroyed. The Seahawks had no business going into Dallas and beating them by more than ten points. I agree with you. Although Russell Wilson, and, oh no, a, yeah, big Russell X-Pack. Wilson is a magician. He he can do it. He can do it all. Right. But Dallas shouldn't have lost that game, and they did. And and that's it, a microcosm of the Jason Garrett era, right? Because you got these games they should win. It's a big game. We need this game, but we should win this game, and they find a way to lose. So, so yeah, so in, in I our think notes, there needs to be a change of scenery. In our notes, you've got Cowboys that. fall back, and my response was, did they, though? Because I don't know that they were ever up. They were 13-3 and three last year. I guess. They were 13-3. and three. I mean, still out okay. the first round. Hypothetically speaking, Zeke doesn't get suspended. Maybe you don't lose Tyron Smith. Do you think they you, have a get, similar year? You get two more wins, maybe? Two more wins, which is a playoff team. I mean, you're yeah. talking about them going nine and seven. They're eleven and five. They're in. I guess so, they did fall back, but it was a lot, a lot of circumstances surrounding that. You're right to ask, did they though? But they had, obviously, really, I, I really, actually, they had one up year, and the rest has been a strew of nine and seven, maybe ten and six. Uh, there was a theory of mine. Not I didn't order, think. Uh, I think Dak. Maybe isn't quite the superstar everybody wants him to be, but he's, he's a still is good. He, he's still a good he's franchise. Good, yeah, quarter. he's good enough to get you more than ten wins a year. I mean, he's he's better than Deshaun Kaiser or 
take that every you day know, of the week, obviously. Some of these other guys. Can't so, think of them. Um, looking ahead to the playoffs. Let's look at this playoff this picture. Is a, this is a crazy playoff picture, and especially in the AFC where. So let's start with the AFC. Right now we got the Patriots in the one spot and the Steelers in the two. They could flip flop if the Patriots lose and the Steelers win. Which is not gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, Patriots aren't gonna lose to the Jets. Let's move on. Mm-hmm. Jags and Chiefs, they are locked in at the three and four spot. Portal service making it into the playoffs. That's interesting. I uh, will talk about we'll talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars here for a second. I you know this is a team that I'm watching and if you know me I love looking at like salary cap numbers and, and who teams are signing especially my team I want to know what's going on in the personnel department who I can look forward to watching. But I'm looking at the Jags they're at the top of the league every year in cap space for like the last two or three oh, years this year. and they finally the spent it and the cap is going up and they're Going to get a lot of free agents, and it's finally starting to gel. I'm hoping they they're get saying Eli that this should be good. They, me too. But I, they're finally starting to gel. Blake Bortles is clearly the weak link on that entire roster. I really but wanted to like Bortles. He's, I know you did. You named your fantasy team after him one year. But yeah, that was rough. I just rough year in the fantasy. I don't know if Blake Bortles will survive this year, and I honestly would not feel. I wouldn't feel sorry for him even if he did get cut no. because I think, you know, it, you've been he'll find, so he'll find inconsistent. And he'll find a job. But he's been so inconsistent. Um, I think the only way he gets a big long-term deal is they somehow get to the Super Bowl. Yeah. But I don't uh, think it's going to that, happen. They're not going to I think they're the still Patriots a little too young. The Patriots and the Steelers young. are too good at what they do to let the Jaguars sneak up on and them. And they've been doing it longer. Right. And they've been in those positions for right. longer. I'm going to take that before I take Jackson. Right. As much as I like him and I like to root for him, too. So... Um, um, we got the Ravens in the five spot right now. The, the boring team. They could drop team. down to six, you know, with some some different luck. And the Titans are in the sixth spot right now, and uh, they can move up to five or stay in six or be out. Ravens could be out mm-hmm. also. Um, then we got the Chargers and the Bills hovering. You know, give give a few options. So I'm just gonna run through these options of where everyone could end up because I thought this was interesting and very hard to research. The Raven, if the Ravens win this week, they're in the five spot. If they lose and the Bills win and the Jags win, they're in the six spot. If they lose and the Bills lose, they're in a wild card game, and then it's up to the Jags and the Titans. If the Jags win, they're five. If the Titans win, they're six. So Bills or Ravens got a that. Ravens got a good shot though. Let's just say the Ravens are in. Yeah, okay. eh, not necessarily. You I know, get it. I get it. Out. But a lot of stuff needs to happen for them. Right. To the, the Titans, you know, they're playing the Jags this week. If they win, they're definitely in the wild card, and then it's on that Ravens, uh, Bengals game, whether mm-hmm. the Ravens win or lose, the what spot they're in. Drops. And then if the Titans lose, the Bills lose, and the Chargers all lose, they still get in, in the sixth spot. So they, they need a lot of losses if they're gonna lose this week. So they really need to beat the Jags, and then the rest will take care of itself for mm-hmm. them. The Chargers, this is a team I'm hoping actually makes it. I, w- I want to watch the Chargers. I think they're pretty exciting. Keenan Allen, Melvin Gordon, they got great defense. Um, I want them to be in. So for them yeah, to get in, rush. they they need to win, first of all, <coughs> obviously. And then uh, they need the Titans to lose. Either way, they need the Bills to If the Bills lose, they're in at six. And, but if the Bills win, they can still get in if the Ravens also win and the Titans lose. So they can get into six. They got a lot of options. Not gonna rip any of this. No. <laughs> but, but follow along, please. And then we got the Bills, uh, who got the longest shot. If they win and the Ravens lose, uh, they get a spot. If they win and the Ravens win and the Titans lose and the Chargers lose, they also get a spot. They play the Dolph- at the Dolphins this week. That might be I a tough match. I want to see the Bills get in. You, you I want to see them be, I want to see them be a thorn in somebody's side. With yeah, they Sean could definitely McCoy be a thorn. and Tyrod Taylor, a decent defense. I think they might cause some problems they, for, for Jacksonville. Yeah, they, they could definitely be problems. a thorn. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I, I like the Chargers over the Bills. I'd rather see the Chargers, uh, personally. So there, there's all your options. Um, let's, let's talk about what we actually think is going to happen, uh, for, for the, the AFC. AFC. Yeah. So I've got, I've got my lineup. I got the Pats one, Steelers two, then Jags and Chiefs, and then I've got the Ravens and the Chargers. So I've got the Chargers actually beating Jaguars in Jacksonville in week in the wild card round, and the Chiefs beating the Ravens. I've got what I want to happen, and then I've got what I think will happen. Mm-hmm. I want the Bills to get that six seed. Right. I think the Titans end up getting that six seed. 
I think the Jaguars handle the Titans after throwing this week's game, and I think the Chiefs beat the Ravens, and I think the chips fall, uh, you know, basically a chalk. I picked chalk this whole year. For- See, I think the Jags are going to win this week. I think the Jags are going to beat the Titans. That's why I have the Chargers in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Titans just aren't very good. I understand. <laughs> I get it. And the I Jaguars are pretty good if they don't try and let Bortles do too much. So I... And from what it looks like at this point, it looks like they're going to be actually trying to win and knocking them out. But I'm with you. If, if I were the Jaguars, I would kind of throw the game because I'd rather play the Titans in the wild card game than mm-hmm. the Chargers. Um, because as I have on my notes, I think the Chargers would beat the Jaguars because the Chargers are probably a better team. Interesting. It is interesting. Thank you for that. <laughs> I would want to see a uh, Jag-Steelers second-round playoff game. That would be nice. Ooh, yeah. So that's, that'd be... But again, as we talked about, I, I think Steelers, they know what they're doing enough. And I, I think if uh, you're Mike Tomlin and you lose to the Jaguars in the playoff game, you might want to be watching. He's going to get a little hot under the collar next year yeah. for Mike Tomlin if they don't, if they have a poor showing in the playoffs. So not that he'll be fired, but he'll yeah, be in the win because it's kind he's of already every, got weird issues with Every year they start out like six and four and there's always these rumblings of, well, hot. is Mike Tomlin really? And yeah, the last six weeks they just killed him. So moving on to the NFC. NFC. What do, you, what do you got for the NFC? Uh, what do I have for the NFC? Uh, did you want to go over the playoff scenarios for some of the – like we've, we've got a Panthers so team that could either be the two seed or they could be the five seed or anywhere in between. Yeah, and so, they're going to be 12-4, and four, possibly a five seed. A wild card 12-4 and four team, go figure. So, so yeah, going, going in, we've got Eagles at one, Vikings at two, Rams at three, Saints at four, Panthers five, Falcons six, and the Seahawks are hovering. Uh, so the Eagles are one that can't change. The Vikings can be a two or three. And then let's go into the Panthers. Uh, cause the, they have the most interesting route. Cause if the Saints win, they win the NFC South. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they, they, they'll get the, they'll get the higher seed. Right. But the Panthers are playing at the Falcons this week and that has a lot of, uh, potential. Wait. Right. Um, I'm looking at uh, your option C here, uh, where the Panthers could potentially end up as a two seed. I find it close to impossible, but they they need to win a Saints loss, Rams loss, and a Vikings loss. And I'm sitting here. I'm a Bears fan. The Bears are not going to beat Minnesota, especially yeah, if Minnesota has a first same. round bye on the line. Yeah. And uh, you're only you. The only thing you have to do is stop Mitchell Trubisky. I don't think uh, – let's just fa- – I think the Saints are going to win. They're going to win the division. Panthers are going to be locked in at the five seed, having to travel despite winning 12 games. That's my that's my prediction. So you've got the Saints being the Buccaneers. I actually think that the Buccaneers are going to beat the Saints this week. Jameis Winston and more of his fingers. Yeah, uh, he might be eating one of those Ws. I I just think they're, they're scrappy, and I think they're going to be – out for blood for whatever reason. Last game, last go around and, for Dirk Cutter possibly. Yeah, and the and the Saints don't. I mean, if they're in the threes, really, it's probably going to end up being the same matchup anyway. Because I see the Rams throwing this game against the 49ers. So we gotta we, let's assume well, the Rams and are early or not playing. Right. So, so let's assume they're going to lose. Man, so. Jimmy Jesus is just <laughs> doing everything he can. Can't wait till we get to talk more about the 49ers next yeah, year. Yeah, next year. Yeah. It's it's on the top of my to-do list already. Um, so let's just say the Rams are going to lose. If they lose, they're going to be in the four spot. So that means the Saints will be in the three, or the Panthers will be in the three, and the other team will be in the five. So then it's just you're playing home field advantage. Right. Is, um, it, is it worth getting someone hurt to have home field against the Panthers? To have home field? Yeah. Getting someone hurt? It depends on who you're talking about getting hurt. But that's part of going up. That's part of playing football. Yeah. I mean, if you need to better yourself in order to play, uh, in order to have a, that ever crucial bye week. Some teams are great coming out of it. Some coaches are, are terrible coming out mm-hmm. of a bye week. Some well, they're teams not gonna really get to, need to keep the, the consistency. Can't get to the bye. My point, I, I understand that. But I'm just saying, like, losing a game to better yourself against an opponent, I think if you need that game, you got to play that game. If you don't, like the Rams are locked in, mm-hmm. not going anywhere. So it's just well, well, they're, going down, they, they're going down to four, but they get a home playoff game regardless, right? So they're not going anywhere. Point being is, uh, I just it doesn't matter what the roll of the dice is. If you need to win the game in order to better your chances in the playoffs, then you need to do it. So, so I don't have a problem with throwing a game in order to influence who you play. 
Yeah. I, I, you know, I can see either side of the argument, and that's honestly a decision that I wouldn't want to have to make in no. the face of my owner, my fans, or anything like that. But And I, I think we're on the same page with this Falcons-Panthers game. Panthers are going to win that one. The Panthers are going to uh, win that one and effectively end the Falcons' season the same time. Right, so then the Falcons would have to hope that the Seahawks lose to the Cardinals, which mm-hmm. probably won't happen because the Cardinals are bad. The Cardinals are really bad. Um, so, so... In, yeah. I'll, I'll take Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson with the, with the playoffs on the line. Yeah. You know, especially knowing that, that you're probably in. So. So my um, NFC playoffs, I got Eagles, Vikings, Panthers, Rams, Saints, cause again, I think the Saints lose to the Bucks, so the Panthers jump up to three, and then Seahawks. And I've got the Panthers beating the Seahawks in week one because the Seahawks are also not very good, mm-hmm. but they're better than the Cardinals, who are bad. Yeah. And then I have the Rams beating the Saints yeah. at home. Just, oh. I just talked a bunch of stuff about how the Panthers are going to be a 12 and 4 or 5 seed, a wild card team having to play a road playoff game, but that's one of the most inconsistent 12 and 4 teams I think I've ever yeah, seen in my life. There's and a I think they're going to lose to the LA Rams in the fir- in, in their first round matchup, and I really do think that the um, the Saints are going to beat a depleted Seahawks team. There are too many offensive weapons for this makeshift whatever replacement defense they've got uh mm-hmm. in Seattle. As much as I, you know, I, I'm a big Pete Carroll fan. I think he's I think he's awesome. I think that that whole team, despite what you might think about them being so outspoken, um I, I like watching them play when they have a chip on their shoulder and when they're all healthy. They're a fun bunch and I just don't think they have enough. So I, I like the Saints to play the Vikings in the second round and I like the Eagles to host the Rams. Who you got in the Super Bowl? In the Super Bowl? If I had to pick it right now. Um, pick it right now. Pick it right now. I'm going to go with the I say Saints, Blurt. Saints and the Patriots. I'm going to go Patriots. <laughs> it's a really tough decision there. And... Throw it out there. Come Vikings. On. The Vikings. The Vikings. Okay. I would, see, two weeks ago I would have won Eagles, but without... Without Wentz, Wentz wagon. Oh, I probably was leaning Eagles too with Carson yeah. Wentz. He was just playing way too well. And then the Patriots handled you know, this so. in the Super Bowl. Clearly. Let's talk about our fantasy football seasons a little bit. How'd you do this year? Um, I was a playoff caliber team in one of my leagues and, um. Playoff just, caliber, but not playoff contender? Uh, I was in the playoffs in our league, but that's, that's true. Eight We're in one league together. Eight out of ten make it. It's not hard it, to so make it. Hey, I needed that eight spot to make it because so, yeah. I was eight. You were eight. I found a way to lose in the first round again, despite having the most points. However, uh, another Nathan league Nathan Brady. in a different league, though it's more standard scoring, and I have got this really weird knack for picking rookie running backs. You do, and a lot of that's because I was a Bears fan and I do that research. But I also because I always because I had Jeremy back. Langford, I had Jordan Howard picked up in the 14th round his rookie year. My buddy picked uh, Kadeem Carey, who was supposed to be the the handcuff to Jeremy Langford. Um, didn't work out. For didn't him. work out for him, and he picked him like four rounds earlier. I picked Alvin Kamara, like the eleventh well, or twelfth round. Pick. You had to sit on him for um, six weeks for it to be good. I even had, I even, for a brief time, he was my last pick. I had Tariq Cohen, and he's like a little jack of all trades. Not a good he, fantasy he player. Him. He's he's good. Yeah, you can so, get over ten points from him usually. I've had this really weird knack with it, but yeah, I got I got snubbed out of the playoffs despite having the most points scored against me. I beat four of the playoff teams. So frustrating. Bastards. Can't get into it. But um, honestly, I love fantasy football. I love I love watching all the games. Interested. Keeps me interested in every one of the games right. because there's always well, something. And going. that's what something the NFL has over college we're football. You can't preach into the choir. You're listening to a football podcast. You can't pay attention to 130 teams in college football, but you no. can easily pay attention to 32 with, with your fantasy players. Yeah, you know, we've got 11 of them all on different teams. So I was in three leagues this year. Three. That's just as, so much as work. mentioned, eighth place in ours because yeah. uh, my quarterback play was not enough, and I don't think I've <laughs> ever had a good running back in our league. Hmm. And that that trend continued this year. <laughs> um, and then I was in an ESPN league that I mentioned earlier that somehow I ended up with Todd Gurley, Julio Jones, DeAndre Hopkins, Christian McCaffrey, and Robbie Anderson on, and still barely made the playoffs because uh, two quarterback league had. Derek Carr was my first quarterback I picked, so he, uh, he had a rough go of it. And then, uh, I didn't realize it was a two quarterback league until about the 10th round. I don't look at the rule. And, uh, grabbed Jill Flacco late, 
uh, and he wasn't very oh, great. That is disheartening. Luckily grabbed Chase Keenum off the waivers at one point, yeah. and uh, he really saved my season, got me into the playoffs. <laughs> Once again, first time anybody's ever said that about Chase, Chase Keenum. Well, great of a guy as he is. Not first, really, because I believe the Minnesota Vikings are saying the same thing. Minnesota Vikings are saying that, yes, but as far as fantasy football is concerned, he's usually the guy left on the waiver yeah, wire. Yeah, let's avoid him. But good for good for him, good for you. I and did not got, win any money. Got into the playoffs, and Just it was a weird it. playoff oh, setup man. that was all uh, total points, and I couldn't cry. I came in like six short of coming in the top 25th percentile, or however they did it. And then I won a league. You won a league? I won a How league. How much money did you win? I don't know yet because they... You didn't look at the rules? You didn't look at the pay? I tried to look everywhere. On, I paid $25 for the league. Um, so I'm, I'm, it's going to be more than that, I think. Last year I came third in this league, and I got a free entry into next year's league, basically. So I won $25, but I had to keep it on the site mm-hmm. where I could use it again. So I'm hoping right. maybe at least 100 out of that. I played a little DraftKings last week. Yeah? I did not do good. No, I, I'm, well, I'm a lot of that probably had to do with the fact that I just thought of it at lunch before the one o'clock game, so I literally Rushed put them all in at like twelve thirty-five. So, so I didn't do a whole lot of research, and I'm pretty sure I didn't look at the rules for one of the leagues, so I finished like dead last. Yeah, <laughs> the draft DraftKings is rough. I, I won twenty bucks on on one. Never won money on that. One. Was the the biggest I did. Usually I lose. Um, so maybe don't take our advice here. <laughs> But I did win one league, so take that advice. Mm-hmm. I, I got lucky in that league because I had the second pick instead of the first pick. So I got Le'Veon Bell. Oh, very cool. If I had very the first cool. pick, I would have taken David Johnson and been in last place. So got very lucky there. Mm-hmm. Um, overall, had a good season. Um, hoping to bounce back in our league because I want that championship belt that I spent so much money on that I'm never going yeah, to keep in my house. Nice. I've never touched it. Can't touch it unless you win. We got championship belt. Uh, it's going to my brother's wife this year. She she won it, and that's going to sit on their did mantle you, and haunt him for the next. Did you four have months. to say that? Yes, I did. That, yeah. Yes, I, I guess did. she deserves it. Yes, she won. <laughs> so Lauren, you did good. good you did job. good, kid. Good job. Yes. Let's uh let's get into our two minute. Let's close this out with your two minute ISO. You had an interesting topic. I just saw the movie that you're going to bring up. Go ahead. So you did you did see The Last Jedi, Star Wars. Spoiler nice alert, alert if you haven't ago. seen uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi, I really liked it. Um, I am a Star Wars nerd, but I am not a Star Wars nerd, mm-hmm. where every little thing that is not the way I expected right. angers me. Um, I enjoy watching the prequels. I've just started on, the, there's two cartoon shows, uh, The Clone Wars and The Rebels. Um, I just started on The Clone Wars, I'm excited to watch that because it, it I've heard it's very much fun and expands the world a little bit now that the actual expanded world doesn't exist anymore. Um, but I really liked it, and, and I don't like this trend in let's just complain about something because it's there. And that's what it I seems like. The NFL? Like, yeah. That, that's what it seems like is no matter, no matter what they do with these movies or any movies is people are going to complain, and the complainers are going to be the loudest. Oh, squeaky, and, the squeaky wheel gets the old Right. Old. I've been on Reddit a lot, and it's all just complaints about the movies of how it, it doesn't live up to, or they, they go against the mythology, and this and that, and the hyper, speed, hyper light speed charge would never work, and why don't they do that? And it's like The Force Awakens, it was basically a retread of the first Star Wars, A New Hope, and everybody had a problem because it was basically a retread. Everybody wanted something new and different, and Last Jedi comes out and tries to do something new and different. It says, forget about the past. Kill it if you have to. Literally saying, we don't want to live in that world anymore. Let's make our own world, and let's make it better. And everybody's still complaining. I'm not complaining. I loved it. I can't wait for the next one. I can't wait for the trilogy that Ryan Johnson eventually gets to do on his own. I thought the the light speed kamikaze... Uh, My favorite scene jump the movie. was just awesome. How the sound completely went out, and you're just stuck there. That was great. That was that was, was my favorite. Was not impressed with the uh, Praetorian guards, Snoke's uh, little red guys with their karate. Yeah, those were hyped a little bit, weren't they? Yeah, they, they, they were. All, it was because it was the only new character. They were all the toys, and they just they didn't they didn't do much. How did they see? They died. It? How did huh? they see? I don't know that they do. That's probably why they got killed so easily. Oh, anyway, that's, that's, easy. that's my two minutes. Minutes. What do you got? Um, actually, I'm going to piggyback off of that. Oh, because double Star Wars. Double Star Wars. And it's not anything nerdy. I'm not a Star Wars nerd either. In fact, I don't think I saw them all in their entirety 
uh, up until probably about five or six years ago. So, I mean, this when I really started to become a film buff anyway. I think that people have to stop being so critical of what came before. I know you're piggybacking off of that subject matter, that, that whole storyline, mm-hmm. but come on, stop complaining about something you know you wanted anyway. You right. know you're going to see it. And you're not heartbroken by it because when the next one comes out, you'll you're be first gonna, in line to go see it anyway. But they're going to be there just so they can complain again. But it, fine. If that's how miserable you want to be in your life, I agree. If you can't have If you want to live your life only to complain, I had fun at the movie. Okay. It wasn't my favorite movie. But what you got to think about is they're starting a shared universe, or they already have at least, where everything seems to be at least to... mostly connected because it's Disney, and they own Marvel, and now they own Lucasfilm, and so they're just and trying that to first build time out. that Iron Man meets up with Kylo Ren, and, and they've got a battle, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> fulfilling so, Patton Oswalt's dream from Parts of Recreation. That would be awesome. <laughs> it's um, going to be amazing. But anyway, I, I just, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to piggyback off of, off of your point. I don't know why you gotta complain about. Stop it. complaining, people. I don't know why you gotta complain about. It. And maybe spend your fifty dollars at the movie. Maybe not uh, as critically, you know, acclaimed as you'd want it to be. But I mean, what, what did Star you think? Movies this are never clear. But are those fans really thinking they're going to like what? They're going to be up for Oscar contention. Right. Is John Boyega going to be giving a speech for his? I like his John Boyega. I, wish they I would love him too. More. I wish they would do more but with him. I wish you know. And He's a little lost. I love days. Daisy Ridley. I thought she was a perfect I casting mean, choice. So that they nailed the casting in these movies. Right. Absolutely nailed. Every Everybody character might not have the best lines or the best scenes, but at least you know I just can't stand people who want to crap all over everything. You wanted the prequels; about. they gave them to you. They were crap. Mm-hmm. You you wanted you wanted something different to wash the taste out of the prequels. You got it. You thought it was the same as the original, so now you wanted something different again. You got it. You're still complaining. Yes, it's, you're going to complain. So either don't watch it or enjoy it. All right. The movies are supposed to be enjoyable. Go to well, the movies, enjoy them. Yes. If you're going to pay for them, it's okay to not like them, but why Why do you have to be that person? I've seen a lot you of know, bad so. movies. I've paid for a lot of bad movies. I've never regretted paying for a movie. Yeah. Well, They're Pain good. and Gain I regretted paying for. I walked out of that one. With have you ever seen McGruder? I wouldn't go pay to see it, but sorry. <laughs> I didn't pay to go see it, but I rented it from the Redbox, <laughs> well, so that's that a dollar I want that's, back. Yeah, yeah, that's a dollar you need back. All right, well, you guys have a good afternoon or evening or morning or really whenever you're listening to this, and uh, we'll see you next time. We're going to be talking about the landscape of television in today's world. Uh, we will see you later. Sounds good. Thanks for listening, and uh, if you have any questions, comments, please follow the uh, follow the Twitter handle and yep. the email address we'll have up in the bio of uh, where you got this. Yeah, it's APA, at APA something on Twitter and uh, a podcast about something at gmail.com. Mostly stay classy. Thank you. And stay classy.